Welcome everyone to the Apothecary Tales, the basics of pharmacology. Today we'll be talking about obesity and its treatment. So what is obesity? It's simply the overweight. And it is usually referred in terms of body mass index. So what is this body mass index, the BMI? It is a person's weight in kilograms divided by the square of height in meters. So a high BMI would be an indicator of high body fatness. And this parameter can be used to screen for weight categories that may lead to health problems, but it is not a diagnostic of the body fatness or health of an individual. Now, when will we call a person obese? The term obesity is given to individuals with a body mass index of 30 kg per meter square or greater. And this usually occurs when the calorie consumption exceeds the calorie expenditure, that is when there is an energy imbalance. So the factors that play a very important role in the development of obesity are such as genetics, metabolism, behavior, environment, cultural, socioeconomic status. So there are certain factors or the certain bad habits that is responsible for the development of obesity, which includes increased wheat intake, junk food, unhealthy drinks, rest at home, less physical activities. All of these bad habits could lead to the development of obesity. So it's very important that we avoid large amount of sweets, junk food, unhealthy diet, have more amount of the physical uh, exercise to remain healthy. So when does a person become a potential candidate for pharmacological treatment of obesity? Those are the individuals whose BMI is greater than 30 or greater than 27 with at least two comorbidities, for example, hypertension or diabetes. Coming to the treatment part, drugs for obesity are considered effective if they demonstrate at least a 5% greater reduction in body weight as compared to the placebo. The majority of drugs approved to treat obesity have short-term indications for usage. But however, some of the newer medications have been approved for the long-term weight management. Coming to the different class of drugs used for the treatment of obesity includes anorexians, lipase inhibitors, serotonin agonist. So the anorexians, also known as the appetite suppressants, includes two drugs that is phentermine and diethylpropion. Phentermine exerts its action by increasing the release of the norepinephrine and dopamine from the nerve terminals and also inhibits the reuptake of these neurotransmitters. As a result, what happens? There will be an increased level of neurotransmitters in the brain. In particular, when there is an increase in the norepinephrine, this is responsible for signaling the sympathetic activity, that is the fight or flight response. As a result, there is a decrease in the appetite. The diethylpropion has got similar effect on the norepinephrine. Tolerance to the weight loss effect of these agents develops within weeks and weight loss typically plateaus. An increase in the dosage generally does not result in further weight loss and thereby the patient would be recommended to discontinue the drug once the plateau is reached. Coming to the pharmacokinetics of these drugs. There is only limited information regarding the kinetics of the phentermine. The duration of activity is dependent on the formulation and the primary route of excretion is via the kidneys. Whereas diethylpropion is rapidly absorbed and undergoes extensive first pass metabolism. Many of the metabolites are active and these metabolites along with the parent compound are being excreted mainly via the kidneys. The half-life of the metabolites is 4 to 8 hours. All of the anorexians are classified as the controlled substances because of their potential for dependence or abuse. The common adverse effects include dry mouth, headache, insomnia and constipation. At the same time, these anorexians would increase the heart rate and blood pressure. Therefore, these drugs should be avoided in the patients with a history of uncontrolled hypertension, cardiovascular disease, arrhythmias, heart failure or stroke. At the same time, this anorexians we have already mentioned would increase the levels of the neurotransmitters such as norepinephrine and dopamine. Therefore, the concomitant use of these anorexians with monoamine oxidase inhibitors or other sympathomimetics should be avoided. 
The next class of drugs that we are going to discuss about is the lipase inhibitors. The only drug that is available in this class that is used as an anti-obesity drug is the Olistat. It is indicated for the weight loss or weight maintenance. This drug is associated with the gastrointestinal adverse effects due to which its clinical utility is being limited. What is the mechanism of action? Orlistat is a pentanoic acid ester that inhibits the gastric and pancreatic lipases. Thus, it would decrease the breakdown of dietary fat into smaller molecules that can be absorbed. Administration of Orlistat would decrease the fat absorption by about 30%. The loss of the calories from the decreased absorption of fat is the main reason for the weight loss. At the same time, the adverse gastrointestinal effects associated with the drug may also would lead to an overall decreased intake of the food. Coming to the pharmacokinetics, the only start is administered only with each meal that contains fat and it has a minimal systemic absorption and is mainly excreted in the fecus. No dosage adjustments are required in patients with renal or hepatic dysfunction. The most common adverse effects associated with Olistat we have already mentioned is the gastrointestinal symptoms, which includes oily spotting, flatulence with discharge, fecal urgency and the increased defecation. And all of these effects can be minimized through a low-fat diet and the use of concomitant cholestyramine. And very rarely we can observe pancreatitis and liver injury with this drug. Early status contraindicated in pregnancy and in patients with chronic malabsorption syndrome or cholestasis. The drug also interferes with the absorption of fat, soluble vitamins and beta-carotene. Therefore, the patients have been advised to take a multivitamin supplement that contains vitamins such as A, D, E and K and also the beta-carotene. And to keep in mind that the vitamin supplement should not be taken within 2 hours of the early start. Early start can also interfere with the absorption of certain medications such as amiodarone, cyclosporin and levothyroxine. Therefore, the clinical response of these medications should be monitored if early stat has been initiated. In particular, the dose of levothyroxine should be separated from the early stat by at least 4 hours. So, the last class of drugs that we are going to talk about is the serotonin agonist. The example is lorcaserin. This is a newer serotonin agonist with a selectivity for the 2C serotonin receptor. So this drug would activate this receptor which are almost exclusively found in the central nervous system. And when this receptor gets activated, which will in turn stimulate the pro opio melanocortin neurons, which would further activate the melanocortin receptors. And this would decrease the appetite. This pro opio melanocortin neurons play a very important role in the feeding behavior in our body. This drug is used for the chronic weight management and if the patient does not lose at least 5% of their body weight after 12 weeks of the use then it is recommended to discontinue the drug. This drug is extensively metabolized in the liver to two inactive metabolites that are then eliminated in the urine and it is important that this drug is not recommended in severe renal impaired patients. There are certain older serotonin agonists that was being used for the weight loss which has been pulled from the market following an increase in the potentially fatal adverse effects including the valvular heart disease. And it is believed that the valvulopathy which may lead to the pulmonary hypertension is linked to 5-HT2B receptors. The most common adverse effects associated with the Lorca serin is nausea, headache, dry mouth, dizziness, constipation and lethargy and very rarely we can observe mood changes and suicidal ideation. The development of life-threatening serotonin syndrome or neuroleptic malignant syndrome has been reported with the use of this drug. Therefore, the patients on Lorca serin should be monitored for the emergence of these conditions. 
The concomitant use of Lorca serin with SSRIs, SNRIs, Mao inhibitors or other serotonergic drugs should be avoided because of the increased risk of serotonin syndrome. As we have mentioned earlier that vulvulopathy was observed with the 5-HT to be receptor agonist and there are no particular data regarding the incidence of this condition in 5-HT 2C receptor agonist such as Lorca serin even though the patient should be still monitored for the development of this condition. For the same reason, individuals with a history of heart failure should use this agent with caution. There are certain combination of drugs that has been approved for the long term use in the treatment of obesity. And this combination includes a fentramine and topramate. The initial studies of this topramate being an anticonvulsant had observed patients losing weight while taking the medication. This further led to the investigation into the use of topiramate for weight loss in obese patients. Because of the sedating effects of these topiramate, the stimulant fentermine was added to counteract the sedation and promote the additional weight loss. When this combination fentermine and topiramate is given to a patient, it is usually dosed in a stepwise process. So first step we give an initial dose. Later, we'll exclude the dose every two weeks depending on the response. And if the patient does not achieve a 5% weight loss after 12 weeks on the highest dose of this medication, then it should be discontinued. And very important thing to keep in mind is that this medication should not be stopped abruptly because this would precipitate seizures. The topramate content in this combination has been associated with birth defects including cleft palate. Therefore, this combination is contraindicated in pregnancy. Other serious adverse effects associated with the topramate component includes paresthesia, suicidal ideation and cognitive dysfunction. The fentramine component of this combination is associated with the increased heart rate. There can be several drug interactions that can be observed with this combination. The concomitant use of Mao inhibitors should be avoided due to the possibility of serotonin syndrome with the fentramine component. And the serotonin syndrome is observed as high temperature, agitation, increased reflexes, tremor, sweating, dilated pupils and diarrhea. So this is one interaction that should be avoided. Another interaction observed is the use of non-potassium sparing diuretics with this combination. This would lead to an increase in the risk of hypokalemia, which is the low potassium levels. Topiramate may reduce the efficacy of the oral contraceptives and this is one of the concerns given the risk of birth defects with this agent. Topiramate is also having a weak carbonic anhydrous inhibitor activity and the use of other carbonic anhydrous inhibitors with this combination therefore would increase the risk of the kidney stones. Now so far we have discussed about the various drugs that can be used in the treatment of obesity. Now let's discuss about the surgical treatments which include the gastric bypass, sleeve gastrectomy, adjustable gastric banding. The gastric bypass surgery is a traditional method in which the most people think about when they hear the phrase bariatric surgery. During the procedure, the stomach is divided into upper and lower pouches and the small intestine is partially rerouted. This would help promote the weight loss by limiting the amount of calories one can consume in a single meal which is a restrictive weight loss as well as the number of calories that can be absorbed by the body during the digestion process that is the malabsorptive weight loss. Next we are talking about is the sleeve gastrectomy. It is an irreversible weight loss procedure in which the stomach is divided into two partitions creating a new stomach out of the small left part with the laparoscopic surgery or vertical sleeve gastrectomy. Like other metabolic surgeries, it is also promoting the weight loss by changing the hormonal signals between the stomach, brain and liver to establish a lower set point. Next is the adjustable gastric banding. It is a minimally invasive laparoscopic weight loss surgery. 
During this surgery, a restrictive band is placed around the upper part of your stomach, forming a small pouch with a narrow opening to your lower stomach. An access port connected to the band is placed deep under your skin. The band allows food to be retained in your upper pouch for a longer period of time, causing you feel fuller more quickly. Then the food passes to your lower stomach and digestion happens normally. There is no change in the way food is being absorbed. However, you should take vitamin and mineral supplements because you will be eating less food. So that is all about the surgical treatment. So now we have completed both the pharmacological surgical treatment associated with obesity. Let's just summarize what we have learned in this video. We have learned what is obesity, factors responsible for the development of obesity, pharmacological agents such as anorexians, lipase inhibitors, serotonin agonist, combination drugs such as fendramine and topramate, then surgical treatment which includes a gastric bypass, sleeve gastrectomy, adjustable gastric banding. So I hope you have clearly understood about this topic and if there's any comments or suggestions please do mail in us. Thank you.